Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for another lesson, another uh, the second of our two free introductory lessons taught by the fantastic Jack Stockin. Really happy to see uh, some familiar names, folks who were with us last week. Uh, hey, Ashley, Susan, John, Susan, Gonzo, Sheila, Nigel, Michael, Annie, Ian, everyone else who's uh, watching but uh, hasn't joined in the chat yet. We'd love to hear from you. Maybe you're sitting back just uh, enjoying a coffee, but if you're so inclined, um, we hope you'll feel welcome to take part in the live chat. Um, the live chat will be how you can ask questions of Jack while he's teaching. Uh, it'll also be how you can respond to his questions and uh, it will really help him know how quickly to go, when to slow down, when to um, dive in a little bit deeper. So please do uh, uh, join in the chat if you're so inclined. Uh, we're all learning together. Don't worry if you think other people might know the answer to your question. Uh, we're, we're all gonna support each other. Your uh, questions are most welcome. So yeah, uh, we're pretty excited uh, for today's lesson. Um, it was really nice hearing from so many of you uh, since last week's lesson. As always, you can always reach me directly just by replying to any of the emails sent to you from LearnBridgeOnline.com. My name's Bajir. I made the site so bridge learners like us can learn from the best. Um, it really is an honor, is a pleasure having Jack Stock and teach his online lessons at LearnBridgeOnline.com. Um, I've I myself learned how to play bridge online. I love this game. I made this site because at the time it was really hard to find such quality online lessons like the ones that we're getting from Jack. Um, so just really happy to be able to help uh, Jack introduce this fantastic game to you all. It can be tricky, it can be complicated, but it can also be fun right away. So uh, let's get started. Uh, without further ado, let me call Jack on up to the stage. Uh, please join me. A, a very warm welcome, a round of applause, if you will, for our teacher, Jack Stockin. Hey, Jack. Good morning, Bajia. Looking forward to today's lesson. We've heard such positive uh, response from folks who have written in, said they enjoyed last week's. I enjoyed it too. Yes, it's always nice to teach beginners, you know, this wonderful game. And it's been a long time. I think it was January since we had our first online beginner call. So, yeah, no, it's about right. Yes, yeah, beginning of winter here in England. Uh, the nights are drawing in. What, what perfect time is here to learn a new, a new game. A, a, a more than a game, that's really a life skill bridge. Mm. You know, you can play bridge, you can, you know, go around people's houses, you can play after dinner, you can take part in charity events. You can play in the airport when, you, when you've got a four-hour flight delay. That's right. This last weekend, I, I had the rare uh, couple hours. The, the kids were away, peace and quiet. I was just sitting by a nearby lake playing some bridge on the phone, just going, oh, <laughs> isn't this good? This is, this is good. That's right. And, of course, in a couple of weeks' time, uh, we'll tell the viewers how they can play bridge on their phone. Um, oh. you know, we're just warming up to that. Yeah, we don't want to go too quickly. But right, right. Not too quick. There. Yeah, not step too quick. Nice, nice and slow. Uh, but, yeah, you can play bridge on your phone, on your tablet. Uh, the computer and, and uh, even face to face Bashir, you know, uh, quite a lot of people now getting those 13 cards back in their hand. Good, good, good. And just a reminder to everyone uh, uh, as long as you've registered, and I believe everyone here uh, is probably registered, maybe you're watching uh, a replay of this on YouTube. Register using the link below um, or just reach out at hello at learnbridgeonline.com. I'll be sure to share with you the worksheet which Jack has prepared for this lesson. And there's also a link, uh, Jack will also show you, there's an easy way you can start practicing something called mini bridge. And so Jack will share with you how that works, but uh, reach out, I'll make sure that you have the links so that you can do that as well. Keep an eye on your inbox too, if you've already registered, I'll send all of that information to you afterwards. Brilliant. Well, Gary's only got 30 minutes, but Gary, don't worry, because you can watch the other 30 minutes on replay at a time. Oh, but let's, let's, let's hop to, Gary. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's uh, jump to it. Um, Jack, I'll be here to help as always. You know I'm uh, just behind yeah. the curtain, so call out my name. I'll be here. I better get on. Yes. See you in a bit. Thank you, Bajir, for the introduction. Yes, hello. I can see all your comments coming in through the right-hand side of my screen. 
Uh, so it's nice to uh, hear where you're watching from, Merseyside, Oxfordshire, Wales, um, Suffolk, and how your weather is as well. Um, that's always nice to know. So, yes, it's a pre it's an introduction, really. So last week was an introduction to the play of the cards. That was like the second part of the game of bridge. But bridge would be a very boring game. Actually, it wouldn't be a challenging. You know, you wouldn't really get much out of it. If you if I randomly chose trumps for you by, you know, say, picking out the five of hearts, you know, hearts of trumps. So the, the challenge of bridge, but also the fun bit as well, is um, describing those cards in your hand via this language called the bidding which is, you know, more difficult than the play of the cards because you have to learn it. But hopefully over the coming weeks and months, we'll have fun learning together. Yeah, that's the idea. Uh, right, Vigio, so should we, should we move on to our first slide? And there it is. Uh, beginner course, lesson two. <clears throat> Let's get underway. So in lesson one, just going to move this a tiny bit over here so I can see your comments. We played out the cards in the second part of the game of bridge. Trumps were chosen for you by me or by the computer. It was a fairly random affair. In a real game of bridge, you choose the trumps with your partner by having an auction known as the bidding. Okay, so what I'm going to do today is get you into this bidding as an introduction, but it is quite difficult, the bidding, to understand. I will just say that now. So if you're feeling kind of thick or, you know, bridge is too difficult or whatever, Bear with us. You know, over the coming weeks, I always say in my first lesson when I used to teach face to face. Look, you are actually playing bridge after the first lesson, uh, but uh, and you won't really know what you're doing. But over the coming weeks and months, we will consolidate and learn more. Right, let's go. So, just a quick recap from last week, everyone. You'll remember that uh, when you pick up your cards, if you're playing in a face to face game, you'll put them into suits: black, red, black, red, or red, black, red, black, so the cards stand out. Online, it's easy peasy. It's all done for you. And you'll count four for an ace, three for a king, two for a queen, and one for a jack. There we go, the jack of clubs. Um, excellent. So that's the first thing you'll do when you play bridge. And just to reiterate, I think, because it can be a little bit difficult for you to know what's going on. When you do the bidding, all four players have their cards concealed like this. Okay, so online, you'd only get to see your own cards. That's quite important. Right. And the dealer, yeah, if you're playing face to face, that's the person who deals out the cards. They would start the bidding. If you're playing online, the dealer's clearly marked for you with a D for dealer. Now, 12 or more points to start the bidding. Good. That's an important number for you this morning. Or if you're watching in replay, like many of you are this afternoon or this evening or the weekend. So 12 is an important number today. Yeah. It's if you remember, there's 40 points in a pack. Ace, king, queen, jack, there's 10 points in each suit. 40 altogether. You don't really need to know that. So an average hand is 10. So if you've got slightly better than an average hand, 12 points, you can start the bidding. And we'll, we'll tell you how that will start in a second. With 11 points or less, you start with a pass. There we go. Yeah, which will be clearly denoted on the online. Right, and then the next person has a go. Okay, so... How many points have you got there? Let's just have a quick, you know, get you going. Hope you'll <laughs> wake you up a little bit if you need a bit of a wake up call. How many points have you got at South? You're the dealer. So that's your first question of the morning in the live class. Anne's first up, followed by Porter, followed by Gonzo. Sheila, I'm just reading out. I can see them as they come through. Ian. Yeah, anyone else like to have a... It's easy to miscount your points, but you've got four. If I was counting, I'd try and get to 10 first. So I'd count the Ace of Hearts and the Queen of Hearts, six. Add on the Ace of Clubs to make 10. And two is 12. Good. Good that you can watch it live, Liz. Um, yeah. And so if I was bidding, I'll move on to this in a second, I would start with one of my longest suits, which would be one heart. I'll talk about that later. Let's move on. And of course, I would only see those cards. So that's very important. The other three players' cards remain hidden. Otherwise, bidding would be very easy if you see all everyone else's cards. Okay, there we go. Um, if South passes his dealer, then it's now West's turn to bid. It goes round in a clockwise rotation. And they would also need 12 to start. Yeah, Pass, pass, you still need 12. And there's a mystical 12 for you that I found on the internet. So would you open the bidding with that hand as south? The dealer does vary. Uh, the dealer might be 
west, north, east, or south. But online, I try and make it as, uh, with lessons online, I try and make it south because it's easier for everyone to see. But, you know, in the real world, east might be the dealer or west or north. Would be open. Anne's first up again, fastest finger. You'd be good on who wants to be a millionaire. You'd be good on who wants to be a millionaire, Anne, I think. Fastest finger first. That was one of my dreams to be on who wants to be a millionaire many years ago. I never made it. I did apply a few times. Um, so I'm counting 11 points there, everyone. And so that's right. We would pass. Yeah. And West would have a go. That's it, Nigel, Michael, Gary. Yeah. Uh, West would need to have 12 to start the bidding, start the auction. Okay. We need to get going now. So the suits have a ranking order in Bridge. They have to, rather like if you're bidding for a painting. You know, you have to, they have a monetary order, 50 pounds, 100 pounds. We have an order of suits. Some of you will know this already. Clubs are the lowest, okay? Followed by diamonds. Followed by hearts. Followed by, have I got one here? I will have in a second when I lean forward and pick one out from here. Followed by spades. Yes, spades are the highest ranking. If no one has, oh, Paul Turn's got a question. What if no one has 12 points? Well, then you all pass and you start another hand, Paul Turn. Yes, you redeal. Um, it does happen occasionally. So there we go. Have you ever heard that expression, you've got it in spades? Yeah, that comes from Bridge. It's the highest ranked suit. You're the, you know, you've really got it. You're, you're, you're the business. You're the top of the class type of thing. If you've got it in spades, you are the highest ranked. Um, good. Okay, so that's your. Uh, some of you might like to think they're in alphabetical order. C for clubs, D for diamonds, hearts, H for hearts, and S for spades. It goes in alphabetical order for those who like to may like to remember that. Okay, we can move on. We'll soon get to. Um, yes, South had. Yeah, South would bid Susan. Yeah, I think Paul Turn said if no one has twelve points, what do we do? I just introduced no trumps there as well. Yeah, here's my bidding box, which is what you'd use when you play face-to-face -face bridge. So you'll see the order. It's all very nicely laid out for you. Um, you have one of these bidding boxes on the table. Um, I'll show you one in a second. But there you go. The bidding's all laid out for you, so you don't have to remember. But no trumps, NT stands for no trumps. That's the highest ranked of all. A club, a diamond, a hard spade, and then one no trump. Good. So now we've got the ranking order. We can, yeah, and there we go. That's what a bidding box looks like. Here's one in reality, everyone. This is what you would have um, when you play as a beginner at a bridge table in real life. I'll just turn it around. That's it. So all the bids are laid out for you. And they're very good because they close up like that, what we use on our bridge holidays. Um, so there we go. Which is here? Yeah, here's a question. Which is the lowest bid you can make in bridge? There's 35 bids to choose from there. What's the lowest bid you can bridge? Gonzo's first up. Here's another question. If you're watching in replay, you can have a go as well. What do you think the lowest bid is? There they are, nicely laid out for you. And this will be done for you online as well. Actually, online, you, you know, you can't underbid. It won't let you physically. All good answers. Nigel, Susie. Yep. Yeah, we will open. Sorry, one club is the lowest bid. Yep, good. Good start. Top right, one club, followed by one diamond, then one heart, then one spade, then one NT, one no trump. And then we go up again, everyone. Two clubs, two diamonds, two hearts. I could go on for a long time. Yeah. So, for example, if someone was to bid one heart at the table, you wouldn't be allowed to bid one diamond. They wouldn't let you do it online. And in real life, someone might have a word with you. You have to go to clubs because hearts are higher ranked than clubs. Yeah. OK, but we'll soon get into that. Practice does make perfect. The highest bid ever is seven no trumps, as you can see there, bottom left. There was a horse called seven no trumps in the 80s. I once bet on it. I bet on it a few times. I think it even won the race. <laughs> Clearly, the owner was a bridge player. But it's rather like a hole in one at golf. It doesn't happen very often and you need a lot of luck a lot of skill to bid seven no trumps. Yeah, something we'll be doing uh, later on, not for a while. Um, but if you're like me, I have bid seven no trumps a couple of times, but I haven't got the hole in one at golf yet, uh, not even that close. Um, let's move on. That is the ranking order of the suits. And there's the answer, of course. One club is the lowest bid. 
followed by one diamond up the line. Ah, the suits have a ranking order as well. Well, they have that ranking order, but they are known collectively as something. I know some of you watching now will definitely have played a bit of bit bridge before. What are spades and hearts known as, do you think, collectively? Let's, that's your next question. What are spades and hearts known as together? For those who've played before, even if you haven't played before, have a wild guess. The clue is that they are the higher ranking suits. Yeah, spades and hearts. They are ranked higher than diamonds and clubs. And now we're probably going to get a feel of those people who <laughs> might have played before. And that's fine to have played in the distant past, as the game has changed quite a lot in the last 20, 30, 40 years. You are better, most of you, starting from scratch and building your blocks up as we go on, rather than coming in at a higher level. Uh, which I do on Wednesday afternoon. They've been playing since January. Some of you might want to do that, which is possible as well, to join the, uh, join the, uh, join the Wednesday class at 2 o'clock. But they have been playing since January. They've done quite a lot of lessons, if some of you are a lot more experienced. But generally starting from scratch, definitely for beginners, 100%. And they are known as the majors, correct? Yeah. And what do you think diamonds and clubs are known as? Even if you've never played bridge before, Spades and hearts are majors. Go wild. What are diamonds and clubs known as collectively? And if you've never used the chat box, have a go. Yeah, don't be shy. Your, anonym your anonymity is guaranteed. Well, I say guaranteed. Some people <laughs> got their surnames in there, but no one is going to know who you are. And a round of applause, majors and minors. Yeah, clubs and dimes are minor suits. Good, well done, Anne, Susan, Sheila, Susie, Lewin, and Ia. Carol, well played. Now, let's get started. If the dealer has 12 points, then they open the bidding with one of their longest suit. Now, in bridge, you will always have a long suit because it'd be impossible not to. So you would always have a four-card suit. I'm just going to fish one out for you here. Yeah. It'd be impossible not to have a four-card suit in your hand. So, for example, there are four clubs. Um, yeah. So you just start off at the one level. No need to go too crazy. So here's that hand again that we had earlier. You've got 12 points. So you must open the bidding. And your longest suit is heart. So you bid one heart. If you were using the bidding box, you'd get out the one heart, if you're playing face-to-face, -face, and put it down on the table in front of you so everyone can see it. If you're playing online, which you will be for the time being, most of you, you click on the one heart, and then the bidding will progress to the next person. Here's another question for you, and I like asking questions. It keeps you from falling asleep and keeps everyone interactive. Um, what would you open? You've got 14 points. I'll just count them for you. So you must open something. But which suit do you open there? Do you open one diamond or one spade? Let's see. What, if you're watching in replay, I wonder what you would do as well. Be honest. Four terms first up on this one. Yes, to place your bets. Have a yes, even if you're not sure. Have a go. It's 50 50, isn't it? I think we would open at the one level, though. Yeah, that's one thing we would do. We don't go in at the two level straight away. Keep the bidding nice and low. You never know, you might win the bidding in one diamond or one spade. Ashley, good morning. Jean, morning to you. A few more using the chat box, which is great. Don't have to use the chat box, of course. Some of you are probably so busy concentrating that uh, you don't especially if you're using an iPad or something, as a bit more, a bit less space for you. It is one spade. One or two of you fell into my trap and bid one diamond, but most of you bid one spade. It's length before strength in bridge, an important expression. So the longest suit comes first. I know the diamonds are a lot better, but it's the length of suit. The reason is, is that the three of spades could take down the ace of hearts. Yeah, if spades are trumps, the three of spades could take down the ace of hearts. The more trumps you have, the better between you and your partner. Remember, of course, Bridge is 100% partnership game. North and South are playing together. Good, one spade. Excellent. 
Well done, Caroline, Michael. Yeah, Gary. Bajir, we're going to play our first hand, please. So we're just going to go to the laptop. Let me just bring it up here. Next to me. Good. Thank you, Bajir. Are we, we're switching on to the laptop. We are. And here it is. Just next to me. And we're going to do some bidding, everyone. So what would you bid? Uh, the South is the dealer. Um, and you can see the D for dealer in the top left. You'll see there's a white table, uh, online table with a one in the middle. Don't worry what the one is. That just means it's the first hand. But the dealer is South. The cards have been dealt for you. And they've been arranged for you, which is very kind of the computer. It always happens this way online. So first of all, count your points as South. We've sorted the suits. That's all been done for you. And what would you open with a South hand? Clearly, you've got 18 points. And you need to open. Yes, you might even need a, you can borrow my calculator if you like. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Add up those points. Quite a few of them, aren't there? 18. What do we open? Sheila, Susie, Portem, Jean, Gonzo, yeah. Well, it's one of our longest suit, everyone, and it's one club. We don't need to open two clubs, by the way. No, that takes out a whole round of bidding space. So I'm just going to do that for you. One club. Good. So we've started the bidding with 12 points. Now, here's an important thing. Um, the important thing is, is that once the bidding has been opened positively by me as South, one club, one up, the other opponents don't need to have 12. No, they can have as low as six points. Nought to five, you very rarely bid in bridge. Your hand is pretty rubbish. Can you maybe whilst playing proper game, Gonzo? Maybe, uh, yeah. Uh, well, no, actually, Gonzo, no. I don't. You can make notes. You can online because no one can see you. But uh, no, at the table, no. You wouldn't want to take notes whilst playing. You you wouldn't actually be allowed to. It's very good for your memory having to remember this, you know, and it will become clear over time. So, do you think now? Next question, everyone. Would West bid? It's their turn. They've got eight points. Got five diamonds and four hearts. Given that I've just told you that really, once the bidding has opened, it's open to everyone, and you only need to have six points to, to make a bid. So, if so, would West bid, and if so, what? So, yeah, I've opened a club. You don't know what that means at the moment. That will become clear, well, clearish when I tell you a little bit later in the lesson. In fact, a lot of it won't be clear at the moment. The bidding is the difficult bit in bridge. It does take a while to get used to. But we're just giving you an introduction today. But I would bid one diamond, yes. Good, yeah. I've got six points or more. I've got a five-card diamond suit. Yeah. North is going to enter the party with one spade. Why not? They've got six points as well. We're trying to describe our hand. That's what we're trying to do with the bidding which as we move on over the weeks and months will become clearer and easier to do. Uh, just at the moment, though, can I just say one thing? Um, if we were bidding this hand for real, um, either online, the only hand that you would see would be your own, okay? So if I was South, I'd only see my own cards. Um, but online, it's much easier for me to teach if we see all four hands laid up like this. It's easier for you. It's easier for me to explain rather than having them all hidden. It'd be a bit very hard. Uh, but yeah, just in real life, you'd only see your own cards. You wouldn't have the uh, you wouldn't have the bonus of seeing all four hands. But it would East bid anything, do you think? It's East turn. They've got eight points. Uh, six points, Anne. King of spades, jack of spades, jack of hearts, jack of diamonds. <clears throat> would East bid anything? They've got eight points, five spades. What do you think? Answer yes or no. Really, with naught to five points, yeah, you very rarely bid, almost never, in bridge. Your hand is rubbish. Stephen's got a question. No, no, Trumps haven't been declared yet. Trumps are only declared, Stephen. Good question. When the bidding has closed. Yeah, the bidding is still very much alive. I'll tell you when the bidding is closed shortly, how we determine that. So would East bid anything? Answer yes or no. Susan thinks yes. Gonzo thinks no. 
It's a yes, no answer this one. Oh, Dennis is a yes. I think in any lesson, actually, a question just came up from someone who was at Lewin. Yes, we would pass. I think one thing is important at this early stage. A lot of you wanted to bid, but you don't bid the opposition suit. So the only bid you'd really want to make would be two spades. I wouldn't want to bid two hearts on four to the ten. You might want to bid two spades, but that's a suit I've just bid as north. You're trying to find a Trump match with partner, not the opposition. So it's a pass. Well done if you said pass. Maybe you've played a bit before. Uh, but no, I would be bang out of that one. South is going to bid two clubs because they love clubs and don't really like spades. OK, so we're going on nice with the bidding now. Just for the sake of argument, West has done their bit. North doesn't want to go on. They're not unhappy in clubs, North. Remember, when you bid a suit, I think this is also important. When you bid a new suit in bridge, you will always have at least four cards. OK. Yeah. So all of those bids there, the one club, the one die, one spade, they'll always have at least four cards in the suit. You never bid a three card suit in bridge. No, you never would. Because you're trying to tell partner about the length of your trumps or potential trump suit. There you go. Um, good. Thank you, Bajir. So we're back in action. Well, East passes as well. And guess what? The bidding has been brought to a close automatically online. Um, but once you've had a bid and you have three passes, pass, 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 the auction is closed, finished, finito, term terminated. Um, it's rather like when you bid for a painting. If I bid £100 for a painting, which I haven't done for a very long time, but once or twice I've bid for a painting. It was great fun. Um, but one, once I bid £100, it wasn't, a very, it wasn't a very good painting, was it? I'm paying £100 for it. But um, there you go. I wouldn't want to bid 110 for it next time round. So that's it. After three passes, the auction is closed. Okie dokie. So South is going to be playing clubs of trumps. That's all you really need to know at the moment. And I'm going to try and make at least seven tricks because then I'm going to win the game, as we did from last week. So what do you think the opening lead might be? Yeah, who makes the opening lead, first of all? How do we get the game going? So two clubs. I'm playing it as South. And remember, oh, yes, we did that word last week, didn't we? We had declarer. So south is declarer. We'll look at that bit more in a second. Yes, three passes need to be consecutive, ball term, yeah. So well done, it, everyone. Yes, answers are coming in. The person who makes the opening lead is to the left. There we go. To the left of declarer, which is west. Good, all good answers from everyone. And what card do they lead? So West is the hand to lead. That's the hand with the Queen of Hearts and the Ace of Diamonds. Which card do they lead, do you think? Trumps are clubs, Gonzo. And look, Trumps are designated here, everyone, by two clubs by South. Look to the left of the screen. South is declarer. Clubs are Trumps. Don't worry about the two for the moment. We'll explain that a bit later. What do we lead? So Susie and Susan are first off on this one. Good time for me to have a drink of water. So we've done the bidding. And now remember, when the opening lead is made, we'll just keep making this clear. The only cards that West gets to see are their own. Okay, All the other three cards are still hidden. People are keeping their cards close to their chest. That's where that expression comes from, of course, keeping your cards close to your chest. Um, the two of diamonds is right. From last week, it's the lowest card from the longest suit. That is the default lead. Okay. It's a, a very good generalization. I don't, some of you wanted to lead the ace of diamonds. No, I would only lead out an ace if I had a king as well. I'm trying to get into the habit of not leading out aces at a very early stage because the only problem is you make your ace, yeah, you win, but then I make my king. Much better to hang on to your aces so they can beat kings and queens with the opposition. So I'm just trying to get you into good habits early on. Right, now, it's, now I have a responsible job here. I am declarer, and what would happen in a real game, online or face-to-face, -face, is that North now, and only now, puts their cards down on the table, face up. So something like this, and they lay them out in columns. 
Remember from last week? Yeah, there's a column. Oh, it's not a very neat one. Yeah. They lay them out in columns, red, black, red, black, and Trump's go on dummies right. Here you'll see Trump's are on dummies right in the top left-hand corner clubs. Um, good. So if this was a real online game, East and West hands would be hidden. All right? I don't get the benefit of seeing their cards. East and West are very much hidden. But everyone gets to see the dummy. So all three players, South, East, and West, can see North Ham. They're the dummy. They go off and make a cup of tea, go to the loo, uh, twiddle their thumbs, <laughs> enjoy the game. Yeah, watch what's happening. It'd be quite interesting. Now, I've got, to play, I've got a responsible job here. So hang on. I've got to play a card from dummy. Second player play low, third player play high. I can bring the laptop in here. She might even be better. Yeah, in front of me. Okay, and I'm going to win with the king. Right, what do you think I might do now, everyone? I've just won the king of diamonds. I've got to try and clubs are trumps, as denoted to the left, where it says two clubs. What card specifically do you think I might play? Yeah, let's be more specific. So I think what's important as well, and online it won't let you do anything different. The lead comes from the person who wins the trick. So remember, that is a trick. Yeah, four cards is called a trick. There are 13 tricks. And we did touch on this last week. We only touched on it. There's something we'll be, cons something we'll be consolidating over the coming weeks as well. So I am going to draw out the trumps. Yes, I've got nine between me. And there's only four out. 13 minus 9 is 4. In time, you'll be able to count out the trumps. Yeah, it's uh, fairly straightforward. But the only problem is, can I just see what happens? Some of you have suggested playing the two of clubs. Shall I see what, tell you what happens if I do? I'm not saying it's right or wrong. What's just happened? I've lost what's known as a very cheap trick. So the opposition have won with the eight of clubs. That is a trick I didn't need to lose. No, 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 no. I'm going to lose to the ace of clubs. But can we, un well, can we undo? I'm going to undo. I have the power of attorney. You can't do this in a real game, by the way. But in a practice game like this, yes. So I'm not going to play the two of clubs. And well done if you said. Only one or two of you did, I think. Start with the king. Let's force out the ace, and then we don't have to lose cheaply to the nine or the eight. I mean, you could start with the queen, jack, or ten. It's up to you. They're all the same value. I tend to play the higher card, though, because it's easier for me to remember that it's gone. But you could have easily have played the ten. I'm really not going to fuss about that. But don't play a low one. Start with a high one. And look what a difference it makes. Of course, I lose to the ace of clubs. I'm always going to lose a trick to the ace. Right. OK, now, East remembers their partner led a diamond. So it comes back a diamond. Third player play high. Don't need to play the ace there, by the way. No, the queen. In, remember, every hand, to Clara as south, east and west can see the dummy, the jack five. The low one. And they take their ace of diamonds. Um, no point trumping here. No, your partner's winning with the ace of diamonds. No point trumping in with their three of clubs. Well done. So defense is doing quite well. And just to the left, of course, you can see the defensive tricks of the three, three that are laid down horizontally like that. Yeah. If you win a trick as Declara goes up, lay down in defeat, up in triumph. There we go. Thank you, Bajir. Now then, um, what are they going to play back? Probably a heart. No point playing back another diamond, by the way, because dummy hasn't got any. What's known as a void. Second player play low. Third player play high. And I have to win with a king. Right. Well, I'm back in play as declarer. So I've got some unfinished business to do. And I've been counting out the trumps. I can multitask at the bridge table. Uh, not not away from it, of course, but uh, I might, so two trumps have gone. I started with nine. Two have gone, and there's two left. Let's hope they divide evenly. So again, I'm not going to play the two here because I'd lose cheaply to the nine. I play a high one like that. 
Good, trumps are drawn. Now, very important, hang on to your trumps to the to the very end now, the Jack 10 5 2. These are your this is your safety net, if you like. You're, you're always going to make those tricks as trumps because they've all gone. But let's wait to the end. I'm going to play the Ace of Hearts now. Everyone following suit. I didn't really mention that last week, but the most important thing at this very early stage in your bridge career is to follow suit. Online, it won't let you not follow suit. So you're OK there. If you're playing face to face, um, the opponents will still will will soon have a quiet word, uh, but you must follow suit if you can. Right. Well, we're getting on nicely. Trumps are drawn, and I'm in my own hand with the Ace of Hearts. The lead is in my own hand as well. What card specifically do I play next? Do you think? I've just won the Ace of Hearts as South. And if you're wondering what the crown is down there next to the South, that just means that I'm hosting the game. But yellow means it's my turn to play. What card specifically do you think? So this is your next question. If you're watching in replay, like many of you are doing, what would you play now? Would you play a, a trump? Seven of hearts? Queen of spades? What do you think? Looking at the dummy. Remember, in the real life, you can't see east and west cards, but you can see the dummy always. There's always a dummy. Susan's got no idea, nor has Gonzo. I love your honesty. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. And some of you have suggested this as well. We're going to play the Seven of Hearts. And because we've run out of hearts on the dummy, we can trump it with the Seven of Clubs. So that trick is ours. Yeah, isn't that good? We've made an extra trick by using Dummy's Trump, the Seven of Clubs. Now. The lead is on dummy, so I must play from dummy, by the way, as well. What about East defending this com this this hand? What does East play now? Do they play low? Second player play low, i.e. the three of spades? Or do they rise with the ace? What do you think? Next question for you. <clears throat> of course, I'll just take a time out to say but there will be many unanswered questions at this early stage. Always are. My beginners always have. Oh, but what does two clubs mean? Who is declare? Where's the lead from? Yeah, these all become clear when we play and practice over the coming weeks. And actually, I think in two weeks' time, we'll get you onto a bridge app. So you can actually play real life bridge for, for free uh, online on, a, on an app. Oh, just I can ask a question whilst you're there. Have, have any of you uh, been doing the bridge um, uh, ooh, the mini bridge. Yeah, so that's a question, isn't it, Bajir? Yeah, I can ask while everyone's chatting. Have you been playing the mini bridge and have you enjoyed it? Has it helped you just to kind of get a bit of a head start? Not yet from Jean, but Susan has good. Yeah, it's good to try and get a somewhat of a feel for the cards if you can, even though the cards are <laughs> electronic. It was great fun, Annie. Yes, good. Good, I'm glad you're... Those who haven't, either in replay... We'll show you how to do it again at the end to practice the mini bridge. You can just play for five minutes, play for half an hour, play however long you like. Good, Susie, well done. <laughs> Otter that looks, says Nigel. Yeah, yeah, it's very early days. Now then, I think they should play the ace. Otherwise, they're not going to make it. So it's not always second player play low. Um, there are exceptions to most things in bridge. They come back a heart. But I've run out of hearts, so I can trump it with the two of clubs. And I'm now on the home straight as south because I've got three trumps left. I'm going to play them out, starting with the top, just in case I've forgotten that there's a club lurking around. With my Monday class, who have been playing for a few years, um, I would actually claim these last three tricks now in the bottom left-hand corner. But it's good to play the cards out when you're learning. And... Well, it was a joint effort, but we've made nine tricks, everyone. Can you see over to the left? There's a nine with a vertical uh, card by it, like that. And the opponent's got four. So we made our... We, we, we were successful. We made at least seven tricks. Um, that's fine to play the ten, Caroline. Yeah, the ten or the king makes no difference. Okay, well, thank you for letting me know that you're enjoying your, uh, you're enjoying your mini bridge. It is addictive, Susan, yes. 
yeah, it just gets you a feel for the for the game. Uh, but yeah, what more can I say? But we've made made our made nine tricks there. The mission was successful. Should we go back to the slides? I'm just going to put the laptop over ooh, to my left, and we'll go back to the slides. Thank you, Bashir. Here they are. What does it mean if Opener bids one of a suit? Well, you might be, I'm sure you might be thinking that. Um, what, what does it mean? Well, if they open one heart, it means that hearts are their longest suit. Gene, we'll tell you how to access the mini bridge at the end. Um, good. If they open one heart, it means they've got four or more hearts. Yeah, as I've just said, you would always have at least four cards in hearts and hope to make seven tricks. But what we do is we add on six. So here's another number for you. You add on six to the bid to give the trick target. It'd be a bit crazy if I was left in one heart just to make one trick out of 13. It'd be no challenge at all. I'd make it every day of the week, even Wednesday. Um, so you add on six to get up to a proper number, which is seven tricks. And the reason it's six, of course, is seven tricks is more than six for the opposition. Yeah, if you get to seven, then, of course, the opponents can only make six. They're 13 tricks altogether. Um so there we go. That's what it actually means. You'd have to make seven tricks. So on that last hand, we were in two clubs. Actually, my target was eight tricks, adding on six, which, uh, which with your help, I made nine. Right. So that is an important number. Once a player's open one of the suits, say one heart, then the bidding is open to all, as I said, on the bridge base online hand. As long as you've got six points or more, you don't have to bid. You know, it's a free world. You don't have to bid with six points, but certainly if you want to, you can. Nought to five, best to stay quiet and pass. But I think that's important. Once the bidding has been opened positively, you can all have a go. So here's a sample hand. Again, all the cards laid out for you to see. Um, South has opened one diamond. They've got 15 points. West doesn't need to have 12 points now. You know, just six or more. They've got nine, so they came in with one heart. North, six points. They bid one spade. Yeah. Remember, you know, and now East wants to bid clubs, but they can't bid one club, of course, because clubs are the lowest ranked suit. And online, it won't ever let you bid one club. No, it would be impossible. It be impossible. So they bid two clubs. We're up to the two level now. And South, well, they've got a good hand. Lovely diamonds. They can bid two diamonds. And then just like the hand we've just played, West, North and East really have no more to say. And at this early stage, with your bridge, I try and keep the contracts around the one or the two level, sometimes up at the three. We keep it nice and low to, to uh, get try and get improved confidence. So there we go. That is the final thing, two diamonds. Once three players have passed, like we've had, then the bidding is finished and we have a final contract. Another word for you. These are all in the worksheet, of course, for you to download um, and have a look at. So here it was two diamonds is the final contract. You are contracted to make two diamonds. Yeah, sometimes you will do so, sometimes you'll fail. So how many tricks does South have to make in two diamonds? Here's the next question. And don't worry, I'm sorry about your internet speed. Liz and Ian are first up, Annie. Jean, Susie, Nigel. So two diamonds is the final contract, and we have to add on six. So we have to try and make eight tricks. Correct. All good answers. Eight tricks in two diamonds. We've added on the six. Good. Out of a total of 13, it's not too bad. It's not too challenging. Another question for you, though, just to keep you on your toes. If the contract was three no trumps, which it might be, not at the moment, but at some point it will be, how many tricks do you have to make there to make your contract? There's a three no trumps. How many tricks do you have to make in three no trumps? Yes, good answers. Susan, Jean, Gonzo, Annie, yeah, Ian, Nigel. It's nine. We'd have to try and make nine tricks. Good. We can move on. We're going to play our second hand, Bajir, on BBO. Thank you. There it is. I'm just going to put it in front of me. 
and I'm going to rack it up for you, one I prepared earlier. Uh, where are we? Da, 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 da. Yeah, I found it. So there we go, number two. Amazing, this bridge tool, bridge base online, an American company, but an absolute lifesaver for bridge players and teachers, um, even after the lockdown. Now, um, who is the dealer? Oh, it's different. West is the dealer, everyone, today. Yeah, it doesn't always be sales. So what would West bid with that one, if anything, everyone? They've only got four points. Sorry, five points. What would West bid? They're the, they must start the bidding off. Gonzo, in answer to your question, is it easier to win no Trumps or Trumps? Well, generally, most bridge players find it easier to make Trump contracts. Yeah, but we do play in no Trumps quite a lot, but they are harder, uh, especially for beginners and intermediates, improvers. Good, we're all passing because we've got a rubbish hand. North passes, they've only got eight points. Over to East, they have got a nice hand, 16 points. What does East bid, do you think? So pass, pass. Remember, they still need 12 points to bid. Don't worry, Lewin. There's bound to, bound to be a few mistakes at this early stage. I still make mistakes when I play bridge, but as a teacher, you don't make a mistake. You call it a um, an error of judgment. Yeah, it's a euphemism. It is one spade, everyone. Yes, I'll cut to the chase. Yeah. And does South make a bid? South has got 11 points. And, ooh, a lovely heart suit, isn't it? Isn't that? That's a great suit, isn't it? Seven to the ace, king, jack, ten. You don't often get a suit as nice as that in bridge. What do they... Does South bid, and if so, what? Yeah. Annie and Gonzo are first up. Some of you want to bid one heart. It won't let me bid one heart, everyone. It'll only let me bid one no trump. Because hearts are the hearts are lower than space. We wouldn't be allowed to bid one heart. No, it just wouldn't let you the online computer. And if you try to do it face to face, your opponents would have a quiet word. So yeah, we can bid two hearts. Remember that we don't need to have 12 points once the bidding has started. We can have as low as six. Um, West passes. Their hand hasn't got any better. North doesn't really have anything to say, to be honest. If North were to bid everyone, they'd have to come in with three clubs or three diamonds. I really don't fancy that at all on a four-card suit. No, that means we'd have to make nine tricks, so they pass. Do you think East? East has another go. The bidding's not yet finished. Does East bid again, do you think, everyone? Do they pass, or would you bid two spades with that hand? 16 points. Yes, it's easier, Gonzo. Online, everything's laid out for you. It won't let you go lower. Um, you soon get a hang of the order of the suits. But remember, this is a, if you're watching a replay, this is only an introduction to bidding. Really, we go through it in a lot more detail. Uh, over the coming weeks, as I've said. Really just to give you a taster of the game of bridge. But I wouldn't say, yeah, <laughs> after these first two lessons, um, it's an introduction. You, you, know, you won't really be able to play bridge. Well, you could, but you wouldn't really know what you're doing. Uh, I didn't. I would bid two spades here. Good. Nice long suit. Even though partners passed, nice long suit. And would South bid three hearts? Yes, they would. Look at that lovely, lovely hand. So we're bidding each other up now, but that is the end of the road for everyone. Yeah. So just to bring the bidding to a close, just to reiterate again, of course, that when you do the bidding, you only see your own 13 cards. You don't see the other people's cards. But it's much easier for teaching if you see the whole lot. Right. Interesting, everyone. We need to have an opening lead. So South is declarer because I've won the contract in three hearts. We need to have an opening lead from West. Don't we? Person to the left. Online, it won't let North or East lead. No, you won't be allowed to. So 
It won't allow me to lead from north or east, but it will allow me to lead any of these cards, which I'm flicking over now. Which one do you fancy? As west, you've got to make the opening lead. And remember, the opening lead is blind. You only, everyone's still got all their cards to face up, close to their chest. Yes, yeah, so the opening lead is blind. We've all got our cards face up, all four players. Which one am I going to choose, or are you going to choose? Well, I have to say that normally you might lead the two of diamonds here, but there are exceptions in bridge, and here's one for you. Partner has led, sorry, has bid spades. So in bridge, it's a good idea to lead your partner suit because you know that they must be long, that must be their longest suit, and they're likely to be strong in it as well. So this is a, I haven't told you this before, but this is a, a notable exception. If partner has bid a suit, then it's a good idea to lead it. Keeps them in a good mood. And what card does East play, do you think? So focus on East with the Ace of Spades and the King of Diamonds. What card do they play? Remember, they can only see the dummy. Sorry, the dummy's now gone face up on the table. So everyone can see the Ace of Diamonds, the Ace of Clubs, etc. So we have the opening lead, and then, then dummy goes down. That'll take you a while to get used to if you start playing face-to-face. -face. All my beginners do. But again, I will just say, is this lesson really, and last week, just gives you a, a, a taster of the game of bridge. And actually, I always say to my beginners face-to-face, uh, -face, yeah, you, are, you, are, you can actually play bridge now, uh, but you won't really know what you're doing and, until a few more lessons. Uh, third player, play high. I'm going to play as... Third player, play high. I'm going to play as high as I can. And I'm going to return a spade. Declare wins with a king. Okay. So my turn to play as declarer, which is marked in yellow. Uh, that yellow line at the bottom means it's my turn to play. Which card specifically, everyone, should I play now? I'm, I'm in three hearts. So I've got to make nine tricks, adding on the six. Which card specifically should I play? I've just won the King of Spades, and I'm in the south hand with all those lovely hearts. And as I've said before, I think last week, it's normally a good idea to draw trumps. Now, there are some exceptions, but most of the time in bridge, you draw the opponent's trumps. And I'm just going to count them for you. I've got seven. Dummy's got two. So we've got nine between us. The opponents have got four. Yeah. Again, counting trumps is something, that's why bridge is very good for your numerical skills, your memory skills. Ward off any of those horrible diseases, dementia, Alzheimer's. There was a survey done in America a few years ago that said that people who played bridge in their 80s and 90s lived a lot longer, kept their minds sharp. I know a few people in their 90s, you know, um, they go out to their bridge club or to their friend's house once a week. But a lot of younger people play bridge as well. I think during the lockdown, we've uh, people in their 20s and 30s flooded to the game. Right. So the thing is, if we play a small heart, everyone, shall I just try doing that? Look what happens if we wrongly play a small heart. It loses to the nine. Again, we've lost a cheap trick. We didn't need to lose to the nine. I'm going to undo because I am the boss. You wouldn't be allowed to do this in a real game. But this is a a practice game, of course, isn't it? I'm going to start with the ace or the king. Look what a difference it makes. I'm now not going to lose any heart tricks at all. And the king. The queen falls. Yes, Gonzi, you're bound to. A few people will have a bit of a headache at the end of this lesson. You'll be reaching for the paracetamol uh, and the water. But, you know, we've only got an hour. What I advise you to do is go back and watch it in replay or own pace. Uh, download the worksheet. I wouldn't do it today, probably maybe tomorrow, the next day. Have a look at it. Let things just sink in. But we will be consolidating everything we've learned over the coming weeks and months. We've only just touched on this bidding. Yeah. Uh, right. So I've drawn trumps now. So I'm feeling quite happy. I'm going to play a diamond to the ace. I'm going to play the Ace of Clubs. Why not? I'm going to play the Five of Spades. And because I've run out of spades, I'm going to trump it. 
I'm allowed to do that. That's why trumps are so important. I'm going to play the losing 10 of diamonds. Loses to the king. The opponents can play a club. Yes, good question, Nigel Scott Everyone, He said, if, if trumps had divided three and one, uh, would I have taken out another round of trumps? I would have done, Nigel. Yes, uh, I would have done. Good question from Nigel there. And I'm just going to play out the winning trumps, everyone. I'm really coasting at this stage. There's no way I'm not going to make the last three tricks as they're winning trumps. I think you've already seen how useful trumps are. That's it. So our target in three hearts was nine tricks. We added on six. We've actually made ten. It was a joint effort. The most important thing really was to play the ace and king of hearts, drawing out those trumps, and then we could play our aces, knowing that no one was going to trump us. I think that's why we draw trumps, everyone, because then you can play out your winners, knowing that no one's going to trump you with a two of hearts or something like that. Uh, but, yeah, I think we can go back to the slides, actually. Yeah, we've done that hand now. We're back on with the slides. Let's see where we've got to. Yeah, just a quick recap, everyone. The contract here, again, is two diamonds. Um, and South is declarer. Yeah, that's who they're known as from last week. The player to the left here is West, makes the opening lead, which we've done, whatever that might be. Four of hearts, could be anything. Lowest card from longest suit is the default. And then the dummy goes down. So we have the opening lead, and now North puts their cards on the table face up. Okay, so that's the only hand you see at the table would be North, apart from your own cards as well. There. So that's what it will now look like. Two of hearts is led, and then the dummy goes down. So that's what Declarer would see, their own cards and dummies. And Trump's gone dummies right. It's an etiquette thing. It'll always be done for you online automatically. I mean, most things are done online for you automatically, which is great. Sorting out your cards, you know, the order of the suits. It won't let you under underbid. Um yeah, so just the play of the hand now. Uh, Declare plays a card from Dummy, which would be the seven. And uh, let's say East plays the queen. Declare wins with the king. All four players play the card, and then it becomes a trick, doesn't it? We gather it up and put it to one side. And we've got to make eight tricks if we can, adding on the six. If you remember just three things, we've covered a lot of ground here. Yeah, if you're feeling a bit confused, that's entirely normal. In fact, it'd be probably if you're not confused, then then that, <laughs> you're doing pretty well. But then most people will be confused at this stage. But these are three important things to remember. 12 points to open the bidding. Again, once you start practicing playing bridge, this becomes a lot easier. Once the bidding has been opened, say with one heart, you can have as low as six yeah, for the other three players. <laughs> Nought to five, you very rarely bid. And then there's the order of the suits, aren't there? We started with the clubs, which are the lowest. Then diamonds, known as the minor suits. Then we have hearts. And finally, we have spades. It's the highest ranked suit. You've got it in spades. And then above that, we have one no trump. Yeah, no trumps are the highest bid of all. Uh, because we need to have a, a ranking order, rather like when you're bidding for a painting. That's a monetary order. And there's a, a card I pulled off the internet. Clubs diamonds, hearts, and spades. Four aces. Yeah, you might get four, dealt four aces one day. Um, what else have we got for you? Yes, practice playing bridge. So just for the moment, can you continue your mini bridge and maybe increase your trick target from one as you become more confident? In, in lesson three, I think actually we're going to do it in lesson four, but we'll introduce you to the free bridge app where you can practice your bidding and play against three and your play, and you play against three robot partners. So they... they uh, they're very uh, patient, the robots. Uh, just before we do, Bashir, what I'm going to do, can we just go back to the BBO a sec? Whoops. I'm going to just put in, I'm just going to go back to the mini bridge. So someone was asking how you do it. So we're just going back to the uh, min, uh, to the BBO, Bashir, thank you. I'm going to type in the right thing if I've got it here. Yeah. The link will be there. Someone was asking, how do you get to the mini bridge? Uh, Bashir will put a link on the replay. Or you just Google um, Mini Bridge BBO. Yeah, and it would come up. But Bajir will give you a link. 
Here we go. So I'm on the mini bridge now. God knows what level six means. So just to show you the mini bridge again. Wow. What an interesting hand. It's given me seven clubs. Um, seven, yeah, seven clubs and the one in the dummy. And I've only got seven. So I've got, yes, yeah, so I've got eight clubs altogether between a seven in the class. So I'm definitely going to choose clubs there as trumps, aren't we? And should we be really ambitious now? Let me just have a quick look at this. Hmm. I'm going to go. How many tricks over six should we try? Oh. I'm going to lose a couple, two, three. I'm going to try four over. So I've got to try and make four clubs. And I think on that lead, I'm going to make loads of tricks because they haven't led spades, which is a blessing. So I'm going to go for the ace of clubs, everyone. High one. I'm going to play it quite quickly. Just to, This is really just to give you a, a feel. Oh. That's a bonus. I think there's one trump left. Let me just get it out. But the queen of clubs has fallen. You know what? I'm going to make all 13 tricks here because I didn't get a spade lead. They could have taken the ace king of spades, but they didn't for some reason. So I'm going to play the ace of hearts. And the king. This is one of those golden hands in bridge. You wouldn't often get this in real life. Queen of hearts is a winner. Ace of diamonds. Look at all these spades. They're all being... Jettisoned. I'm playing this quite quickly, of course. I just want to really give you an example. Trumps. And I've just got winning trumps left. I'm going to make 13 tricks. Surely, surely luck. No, I didn't get a spade lead. Look, they're throwing their ace, and, <laughs> ace of spades at the end. Bad luck, computer. I win 13 tricks. <laughs> I didn't want to go for 13 tricks, six. I might have lost. And then we have another hand, of course, deal two. For those who haven't used it before, if, if you can't use the link that Bashir has given you, just type in Mini Bridge Bridge Base um, Bridge Base Online or BBO Mini Bridge. It'll come up. Let me just get to one where perhaps I don't want to play. Yeah, so this one's more interesting, everyone, um, because I don't have that many trumps between us. I've got seven hearts and I got seven diamonds, but really, to play with trumps, you need to have eight. So I'm going to select no trumps here. And how many tricks will I try and make here? Five. Oh, I'm going to be ambitious. Five. Eight. I'm going to go for 12 tricks. <laughs> but that's really, I'm not going to play this one out because I could play this all day. It's quite fun. Um, but yeah, you can set your tricks. I mean, if you're, you just need to go plus one, plus two. I'm actually going to make loads of tricks here. Um, or I'm only actually going to lose to the ace of clubs. So it's cut a long story short. Uh, I'm going to make my target, but I'm going to leave that one to you. That's fun. But yeah, should we just go back to the slides, please? And there we go. Um, I think it's the end of the show. But yeah, are you there? Thank you so much, Jack. And thank you everyone for uh, making this such a fun lesson. It, it can really take courage to... Um, answer questions when you're still learning right at the beginning. I'm so impressed with everyone who uh, joined us live and took part in the chat. Yeah, just a couple of things, Bashir. Um, a couple of questions. When bidding, you don't see partners' cards, Ian, no. No, when you're bidding, uh, it's the cards are always hidden. That, that, that's the challenge of bidding, isn't it, Bashir? <laughs> you know, if you saw each other's cards, it'd be, it'd be a lot easier. Oh, it sure would. <laughs> Sometimes I <laughs> wish, wish I could. Sometimes you wish you could. You're a learner, too. Yeah. Um, and someone said you started the bidding with 10 points. No, Susan, only on mini bridge. Yeah, a uh, mini bridge, there's no bidding. You just play out the cards. Um, so, yeah, um, Anne's really enjoying it. Uh, I just try to take it at a nice steady pace there, Bajir. You know, nothing. I mean, we covered a lot of ground, didn't we, really? I'm so impressed. I, you, you really covered a lot, as you always do. Um, I mean, you make things so clear. So even if these are – you're introducing topics which – as we keep playing, we find, oh my gosh, it's it's often that no matter how long you've been playing, you might be unsure what to bid or what to lead. But Jack, yeah. the way that you present it, you're bringing us into the game in a way that makes it, I mean, it makes me want to, as soon as we finish here, I'm going to hop over and start playing. <laughs> well, that's the idea, you know, and it is a difficult game to learn. You know, let, let, let's not make any bones about it. But I think, you know, uh, what I really 
really understand about bridges that it is a difficult game to learn. We do have to take it step by step. And actually, there'll be quite a few people in that class, Bajir. He'll be quite confused now. Why is he bidding one heart? Why is he bidding one spade? How many tricks do we have to make? Right. Who's declaring? Who's making the opening? These are entirely normal questions when you start playing bridge. I mean, it's like riding a bike. You know, when, when I first started riding, it's really difficult. You know, I'm ever going to manage right. this. But then suddenly it kind of, you know, suddenly after a bit of practice, um, with the right lessons, playing the cards, right. you know, playing online. That's a, that's a yeah. good metaphor. I, I recently taught one of my kids how to ride her bike just a couple years ago. And uh, the first time, oh, my gosh. I mean, she was just getting mad at me, but then something yeah. clicked. Yeah. So it's a, it's a good reminder for those of you who either watch live or via the replay, if you have smoke coming out of your ears and you just feel totally confused, you're not alone, and that's not – a bad way to feel right now either. No. Hang in there. I mean, You're in good hands. Thing. Yeah. I mean, if this was Snap or Racing Demon, you know, I mean, um, for a start, you and me would be out of a job. Um, but it would be no fun, you know. I mean, I occasionally do play Snap uh, with my with my son, but uh, he's kind of moved on from that now. But I think half of the fun and the challenge of learning bridge is it's an ongoing process. It's something that people can look forward to each week. They can make new friends either online with bridge partners. Like a number of our, you know, our January class, haven't they? They they all get together on bridge base and you know once or twice a week. And there's, I think, do we have like, do we have fifty people on the first week or something? Oh, it's amazing! It's but it's we, so nice seeing how many how many of those beginners are still playing, learning. Yeah, and, and they, you know, as you said, right, the depth to this game means that it stays interesting over a lifetime. Um, yes. Yeah. I think so. And there's so many people who play bridge now. And of course, once you can play, you can play with your friends socially. Some people go to a bridge club. Almost every town has a bridge club. Sometimes they have two or three. Uh, and a village hall. So there's bridge going on there as well with the local community. So it is a great game. It's just so nice to see after the lockdown, it's been given a bit of a, a massive kind of head start bridge. You know, it's been in the press a lot. It's been on radio. It's been all, all over the place. So um, yeah, that's a really good thing to have. Now, but I think you're going to tell them we've had our first introductory lessons are you going to tell them what happens next week yes we hope to see uh all of you as many of you who would like next week uh you can register there's a link just to the bottom of this video on youtube if you've registered i'll be sure to send you the information so that you can continue with these lessons uh please note uh there there is a coupon code that you guys can use so please use that we would love to see you all there if you run into any trouble registering, just uh, you can reach out to me, hello at learnbridgeonline.com, or just reply to the email that I sent to you before this lesson, or re respond to the replay uh, email that will be sent out shortly. Um, and yeah, I'll be here to help on that end uh, however I can. With any bridge questions, of course, you could just leave a question or a comment in the comments below. Jack will keep an eye on this page, on the YouTube page. And um, and the if you do continue with the lessons, there's a class page where you're able to keep asking bridge questions of Jack as you progress. That's it, Bashir. I, I like answering bridge questions. And I know that people on the class on Monday morning, Wednesday afternoon, I mean, they don't, uh, luckily there's not 50, 100 questions a week, but the odd question they've got is absolutely fine. And they, as you say, next week, they'll be able to put it on the post page. And I'll be able to answer it for everybody to see as well. So, um, you know, I don't have to answer the same question kind of, you know, 50 times. Gonzo so where's asked, the, where's, where's yeah. the coupon? It might change. So I, I'm going to say it now. If you're watching on replay, I can't promise that it'll still be available. The coupon code is beginners. One word, beginners. If you use the coupon code during checkout, it'll be 50% off your first four weeks as a member of the class. Um, and so we're doing that now, especially for everyone who joined us live. Um, again, if you did end up coming across this video uh, as replay, I'm not sure that that will still work, but please just reach out. Hello at LearnBridgeOnline.com. I'd love to do anything I can to help introduce the game to you. So um, even if the coupon code is no longer available, just reach out. I'll see if I can place you in a good class with Jack. And um, yeah, I just want to help out however I can. I was going to say, Bajir, yes, it's it's nice that we can, um, obviously everyone's had two free lessons now to just give them a feel for the game. It's a very gentle feel now, you know, just how the game works. Uh, obviously, we consolidate over the coming weeks. And it's great that, uh, you know, LearnBridge Online can offer a 50% discount to two free lessons in effect 
Um, I, mean, so I think lessons are eight pounds a week. Is that right? Right. So membership in the class is eight pounds a week. Uh, and being a member of the class, you can attend the live lessons. You also have an access to all of the replays that are available in that class's replay library. You can also ask Jack Bridge questions on the class page. And increasingly, we're doing more and more online events for members of the class. Um, so it's not just the live lessons. It really is a chance, we hope, where people can, where you can meet each other, gain some new bridge friends. Uh, it really is fun. I mean, it's been such a joy being able to meet other bridge learners from around the world, literally around the world. I, I mean, I think every, uh, I mean, at least five continents are represented in the different classes. And uh, Jax is always one of the most friendly, supportive, encouraging. Um, so you would all be most welcome there. And I, as you say, Bashir, I'm here. I'll be here every week. Uh, uh, oh, the, the time changes next week, doesn't it? Is it that's important? Is it nine thirty next week? Good. I'm glad you brought that up. Thank yeah. you, Jack. Yes. So the lessons here on out will be starting at nine thirty a.m. UK time. And uh, when you register, you'll see that uh, an email is also sent out to all members of the class beforehand, similar to if you registered for this, just a reminder and an easy way you can get in. One small difference, the uh, the lessons, we will move into our virtual classroom. So these YouTube video, these uh, YouTube live streams that we've been doing, you guys have been so wonderful joining us in the chat, uh, but we'll be moving into a private environment where you can ask questions and you don't have to worry about other people seeing what you're asking, if that makes sense. Yeah, and, um, and there's no need for them to download Zoom or anything. You just literally send them the link, don't you, on the morning, and they click on the link, and then they're in the classroom. That's right. It's really easy. And a, as always, either I'll be here or someone from the team will be here to get you in if you ever run into any trouble. Yeah. Brilliant, Bashir. Well, you know, really pleased to have, uh, you know, taught the first two introductory lessons. We've, we've done the play. A brief introduction to the bidding. And, and if you're one of those people who think, oh, the bidding, God, it's really hard. It is, you know, it's not easy. Uh, but certainly try and practice on the mini bridge to try and get your, you know, a feel for the cards in an online way. And um, yeah, I'll look forward to lesson three. Um, you know, well, same time, almost same time, 9.30 live next week. And we're going to talk about balanced hands, Bajir, then, and introduce, introduce, I don't want to tell you too much, the one no Trump bid. Oh, cliffhanger. Cliffhanger, yep. everyone. Tune yep. in next week. Our heroes <laughs> on the cliff hanging on. I know. Can you bear the excitement uh, of wanting to know what one no Trump means? But now I'm looking forward to it. Now we've got a really friendly class, as we can see from the chatting. So, um, yeah, I'm, um, I'm looking forward to it. Well, I, I am as well. Once again, thank you, everyone, who could join us live. Uh, to those of you watching on replay, thank you guys to you as well. Reach out with any questions. And we really hope to see you next week. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, this really, It's been so kind of you to take the time for these two free lessons last week and this week. Thank you. Yeah, and no, I'm just happy, just final word, I'm just happy to teach this wonderful game of bridge, which, you know, for, for many years has brought me such joy. And now I'm able to teach it, which is great. So uh, I'm just happy to get people playing bridge. You know, it's a wonderful game. Thank you, Jack. Thanks, everyone. Please take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.